now we can state two, two traditionally two problems about that. Given the stress state, so the normal and tangential stresses in certain planes, find where are the principal directions and the principal stresses. Okay? Diagonalize that. Or the inverse problem, which is the opposite. If I know the principal stresses and the principal uh, strains, uh, sorry, principal directions, then find what are the stresses in any system of coordinates, okay, x, y. That's what is called the direct and the inverse problem. Okay, so we can do that completely analytically, these two problems. For instance, imagine that they know uh, the stresses in toward, uh, in the coordinate systems, never forget that there is another third uh, system which is uh, 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 and a third axis, which is normal to the, to the plane of analysis, and maybe a third normal stress in that plane, no tangential stress. So I know sigma x, tau xy, sigma x, uh, like that, tau xy. And by the way, the name here, this is tau xy too, right? That's called tau xy because, I mean, that would be tau yx, but it's by symmetry, is tau xy. These two have to be equal, okay? And by the way, notice something, that if this goes up, this goes left. If for some reason this went down, this would go left, the other was right. So look that these two tangential stresses always meet in the corner, the two meet in the corner, or the two separate in the corner. That's a criterion to say, okay, that one couldn't be a, a pointing to the, to the left. Okay, because according to the mm, stress tensor convention criterion, if tau x y is positive, the two that points to the left, that to the right, that points to to the uh, goes up. So that, that they, they also find the two arrows in that point. If tau x y was negative, that would be down. That would be left. So the two arrows tend to separate in the corner. Okay, never could be that this goes right and this points down. Okay. Anyway, just keep that in mind. So, I have this stress state. This is compatible, so to speak, in that sense. So the two stresses point, two tangential stresses point to the same corner. And now I know the forms I have derived. And now, from that, I could compute, just by taking different values of theta, the stresses in any plane, uh, or in a, a system of coordinates, x prime, y prime, defined by an angle theta, or alpha, whatever it is, uh, with respect to the original system of coordinates, by replacing theta here. And there is one system of coordinates in which these stresses become just compressive and there is no tangential stresses. They will define, what would these planes define? And the corresponding x prime and y prime. What will they define? the principal, the other two, because the third one are, we already know is the orthogonal one, okay? So there is a possibility in these cases of made a simple analytical orthogonalization, uh, um, eigen solving the uh, eigenvalue problems to obtain the principal stresses, which is looking at what planes, at what planes, <coughs> there should be two, the tangential stresses are zero, because that's what define the principal directions, okay? But the tangential direction is, is given by that formula. So if alpha is that plane, by replacing alpha here, the result has to be zero. Okay? So this provides an equation, which is that equation with zero at the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, which have solutions. This is an algebraic uh, transcendent, transcendent equation, which two solution is in terms of the tangent of two alpha. Look, tangent of two alpha would be that divided by that tau xi divided by sec sigma x minus sin y divided by two. How many solutions are two? There is one solution by two, two alpha, or two solutions for two alpha, and two solutions for alpha, which differ on pi over two. And that's the solution. I mean, looking at the sinus of two alpha in terms of the tangent of two alpha have two solutions, because the square root provides a plus and a minus, and by replacing this tangent here, I can define the sinus of two alpha as plus minus Txy divided by this, and the cosine of two alpha plus minus 
minus this divided by this. So with plus sign, I have one sinus and one cosinus, so that define an angle. And with minus, I have one sinus, one cos cosinus, the cosine, and that defines the other angle. The, the other angle. Okay? So the point is that by solving these equations, I have just looking and solving that, and then I have two angles. One angle which is alpha, which corresponds to that principle of stress sigma one, and the other one which would be alpha plus pi over half, pi over, over two, sorry, which would define another plane, another inclination of the plane, which would define sigma two. Okay. So finally, computing the two principal direction is just doing that with plus and minus. Okay, and I have the two two orthogonal values: alpha one with the sign plus alpha one plus pi two with the sign minus. Okay, and what are these are the directions? What would be the principal stresses? Well, principal stresses would be by like replacing these angles into here. For every angle of that, so taking theta equal alpha one. I would obtain a sigma theta. And by taking theta equal alpha two, I would obtain another sigma theta. Two values, and one of them would be sigma one and the other would be sigma two. Right? So let's do it, and that's what is done here, by replacing the angles here, obtain two solutions. One which is this expression and the other of this expression. Which is larger of the two, by the way? What is larger? Of course, this is something plus a, pos a number which is positive, that the square root is now considered the positive value of the right square root, and this, the, the, that is the, the, the same value minus this. So of course, the largest one is sigma one, and the smaller one is sigma two, okay? So that is the, definitely the expressions already, already ranked in terms of the size, sigma one being greater than sigma two, that is the expression of sigma one, and that is the expression of sigma two. Okay, so that is the key formula. Look, this is a closed form expression that says if I give you a tensor of stresses in certain system of coordinates, like this one, I give you this stress, this, this stress tensor in 2D, 2D stress tensor. I tell you, compute me the principal stresses. You go to the formula, you have the form there, and just by replacing sigma x, sigma y in this expression here, you obtain sigma 1, you obtain sigma 2. And you want to compute the angles, just replace sigma one, sigma two in these in these values here, and then you will obtain sorry. You will obtain the uh, in these expressions here, and you will obtain the angle of every one. Okay? Alpha one, alpha two. So that is even easier. You don't need any eigenvalue problem to diagonalize the stress. It is a closed form uh, eigenvalue problem of for diagonalization of the stress state. Now, in this system of coordinates, defined by this, by, by this, in this system of coordinates, now we can say that uh, the stresses could be sigma one, principal stress one, computed, and sigma two, okay? We can also, in terms of this, solve the problem, in the inverse problem. So imagine that we know a system of coordinates and the cor where the that corresponds to the principal directions. So x prime corresponds to the principal direction one, and x two is the principal direction two. Okay, so I can just replace the old formula I have derived. That's valid if x is x prime and y is a prime. So what is the stress in any plane, normal and tangential uh, stresses, in any plane? that normal, whose normal forms an angle beta with respect to sigma one, okay? Beta playing the role of theta here. And don't remember that theta, at the beginning, it was considered positive if, if had, uh, remember the signs, theta is positive turning, turning uh, or, uh, with respect to x direction, forming uh, anticlockwise sense. Okay, so now we consider theta equal alpha, and sigma one plays the x direction role. Okay, so the uh, the normal stress or the angle corresponding to this plane to this plane 
is defined by this beta, beta moving or increasing, being positive in, in, in the anticlockwise sense. And by replacing this equation here by theta equal alpha, and of course, how much is tau x, x prime y prime here? Zero. So this term cancels and this term cancels. We have a very simple expression <coughs> to compute in terms of the principal stresses for a plane, a given plane, whose normal forms an angle beta with respect to sigma 1, with respect to sigma 1, uh, positive in the anticlockwise sense, we have these two formulas here. So now, give me one beta, and I'll tell you what is the normal and the tangential stresses. Look, if that no number, tau beta, is positive, what does it mean? How do I have to, to, to plot the tangential stress tau in that way? Because that positive tau means that it's turning anti, sorry, clockwise with respect to the interior. And if this tau is negative, I have to plot it in that sense. So turning clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise in the frame of sense. And look, and as, as for sigma, if this sigma turns out to be positive, that's com it's tensile, and if it's negative, it's compressive. So I can plot just two vectors displaying in sense and size the two components of the stress on these planes, the tangential and the normal. Okay, so these are formulas that one, one can help. Just keep in mind that there are sign conventions for beta and for theta, right? And then sign conventions for plotting the resulting values onto a plane, sigma, uh, uh, positive sigma beta means uh, tensile, negative means compressive, and positive tau beta means that it turns, it follows the m vector defined before, so, uh, sorry, that one, so it follows that beta tends to, uh, tau beta tends to turn to in, in anti-clockwise, in clockwise sense with respect to the interior of the, of the plane, okay? So there is no, no possible uh, uncertainty in the, in the defi definition of that. Okay.